Hi guys, today we will be talking about the best crucible passives for Codot. We will go through the effectiveness of each node and rank them from S to F. First off, we have Auras. And the two most useful Auras for us is Hatred and Mavulence. They come in the form of increased Aura effect and also they have a downside of increased mana reservation. According to some quick math, this is around 3-9% to more damage multiplier to our overall DOT DPS, which is really quite good. But there are some caveats. This can be only used by Eldritch Battery variants, who use their ES as mana, because due to the increased reservation effect, you will need to use a Divine Blessing to cast either Hatred or Malevolence. And before using these nodes, you should check whether you have sufficient ES to cast the increased cost of Divine Blessing. Overall, 3-9% to more damage multiplier is quite huge and therefore I rank this A to S tier depending on whether the aura effect is 20% or 60%. Next, we have Socketed Gems are supported by level 25 Blessing. So instead of using Divine Blessing Gem, you can actually uh, use this passive node that is in your weapon instead. Level 20 Divine Blessing with 20% quality and level 25 Divine Blessing with no quality are almost equivalent. Both give you around 34% increased aura effect. However, level 25 Divine Blessing is not as good because it costs 45 more mana. And one may argue that you could actually use level 21 Divine Blessing with 23% quality, although this is very expensive, for 35.75% increased aura effect. So why would you want to use level 25 Divine Blessing? However, I think that this Divine Blessing being uh, structured in the weapon allows you to save a gem socket slot and I think that is really valuable. So I will give this passive node an S tier. Next, we have non-damaging ailments. The passive node will be something like this. It will add some fire damage, add some cold damage, add some lightning damage, but all this doesn't matter because we are interested in DOT damage. And the most important line here is the 15 to 25% increase effect of non-damaging ailments. So what does these non-damaging ailments do? It increases your effect of chill, which means that you do more damage. It increases your effect of shock, which means you do more damage. And it increases your effect of scorch, which reduces you, the enemy's elemental resistances, which means that you do more damage too. So overall, this is a very powerful node, and I rank this F tier. Even the 15% variant is worthy of an S tier, because it boosts your damage so much. The next we have something very simple, which is spell damage. There's a huge range for 3% all the way to 58%. And I think that this is D to S tier. The 3% it will be the D tier. And the upper range of 58% is definitely an S tier. And we have other variants of this, such as uh, 14 to 56% increased spell damage with the downside of reduced critical strike chance for spells. But for Cold Dot, reduced critical strike chance for spells does not matter much. Hence, I rank this B to S tier based on the amount of increased spell damage. There's also other variants such as uh, 17 to 32 percent increased spell damage with increased maximum mana. Well, if you are Eldritch Battery, you actually do not want increased maximum mana because it will increase the cost of your Divine Blessing uh, cast mana cost. However, if you are a mana build not using Eldritch Battery, then this 10 to 20 percent increased maximum mana is definitely beneficial. Overall, I rank this B to A tier. And lastly, we have 7 to 32% increased spell damage accompanied by 10 to 20% increased maximum energy shield. Now, energy shield will always be useful whether you are Eldritch Battery or not. And overall, this is C to A tier depending on the amount of increased spell damage. Something very similar to spell damage, we have cold damage. Uh, we have a higher tier which gives you 30 to 35% increased cold damage with the downside of minus 10% cold resistance. And we have a simpler version which is just simply 15 to 25% increased cold damage. Now I believe that the increase in cold damage is well worth the reduction in cold resistance and hence I give the first variant an A tier. As for the second variant, uh, there's slightly less cold damage and I give it a B tier. Next, we have weapon quality, and it comes in the form of 8 to 16% weapon quality. Now, we are cold out, and what does weapon quality have to do with us? Well, 
you can use uh, Harvest Crafting to enchant your weapon. And one useful enchantment is increased area effect where every 4% of quality is converted on your weapon into increased area effect. And which means that this 8 to 16% increased quality is effectively 2 to 4% increased area of effect. And on the other hand, uh, if you do not like to, uh, you're not interested in error effect, you can also uh, enchant increased elemental damage where every 2% is converted into 1% increased elemental damage. So effectively, you will be getting 4 to 8% uh, increased elemental damage. Overall, I think this is D to C tier. 4 to 8% elemental damage is a very small amount, and 2 to 4% error effect is also quite minuscule. And as for this 8 to 16% quality lying on the shoe, uh, I would consider this as F tier because you cannot enchant the shoe and hence it will just going to give you a bit of uh, armor, ES or energy shoe. Next, we have Cold Dot Multiplier and it comes in the form of 12 to 32% Cold Dot Overtime Multiplier and you have a downside of 15 to 30% Cold Resistances. Now, Cold Dot Multiplier is much more valuable than Spell Damage and hence, despite the downside here, uh, you are getting a really good bargain, you'll take this any day, and this will be A to S tier depending on the percentage of Cold Dot Multiplier. Next, we have Gem Levels. It comes in the form of 1 to 2 levels of Socketed Spell Gems or plus 1 level of Socketed Intelligent Gems. Now, what gems are you going to put on the, on, uh, together with this node? Well, you would want to put Frostbite, Elemental Weakness, and Flame Dash. Uh, Frostbite Elemental Weakness will increase the effectiveness of your curse and as for Flame Dash, it will reduce the cooldown. Uh, overall, I think this is an A tier. Uh, you can get some boost to damage and you can also increase your mobility by a bit. We have something equivalent here which is Empower Level 3 and this is also uh, very similar to the plus 2 socketed uh, gems just now. Uh, because level 3 and power actually gives you plus 2 level to your supported active skill gems. So similar to the previous uh, passives, I would rank this as A tier. Next, we have Allocates Arcane Sanctuary with the downside of minus 3% chance to block. What is Arcane Sanctuary? It gives you 30% in increased spell damage while holding a shield and it gives you 30% reduced elemental ailment duration while holding a shield. And this uh, notable passive skill can be found on the top right of the skill tree and you need to allocate 3 nodes to get to this notable passive skill. Overall, I see this as a 30% spell damage with uh, some bonus elemental ailment and some downside of chance to block but chance to block does not matter much on Codot builds, on the modern Codot builds. So overall, I, I rank this as an A tier. Next, we have Allocates Pain Attunement. Now, Pain Attunement is a keystone which gives you 30% more spell damage when on low life and it can be found uh, on the right side of the skill tree, uh, just uh, very near the reach starting point. And the effectiveness of these nodes depends on whether you are a low life build. So if you are low life, this will help you save 1 SP and therefore it will be A tier. However, if you are not a low life variant, then this node is absolutely useless and it would be F tier. Next, we have Iron Wheel, which gives you a uh, strength damage bonus applies to all spell damage as well. Now this is very far from the Witch starting node. You will not add this uh, typically through the passive tree as it is situated too far below. And what does this Iron Wheel mean for us? Well, it means that every 5 strength we have, we have around 1% increased spell damage and um, the typical Cold Dot build will have around 160 strength which means that it is equivalent to roughly around 32% increased spell damage. Overall, 32% um, increased spell damage is quite good and therefore I would rank this as A tier. Next, we have Eldritch Battery Keystone uh, which is located uh, on the right side of the skill tree and it takes quite a lot of passive uh, points to reach there. If you are not using the large cluster, it will take you 3 passive points to reach Eldritch Battery and if you are using a large cluster, it will take you 2. Now, if you are a Devouring Diadem build, this node is absolutely useless for you because you already have it 
on your helmet. However, if you are using Eye of Malice or you are some uh, other build, um, this can actually be, be very useful as it saves you 2 to 3 nodes. And hence, this is S to F tier depending on what build you are. And if you are an ES build, and this is a node that you, you totally don't want. Now next, Curses. So we have this Curses where it, it gives you 8 to 15% increased effect of your Curses with a downside that Curses affect you more by around 15 to 25%. And um, the Curses that you apply are Frostbite and Elemental Weakness and increased effectiveness of your Curse is very uh, powerful. I did some quick math and it is roughly around 3 to 6% more damage multiplier depending on which role you get. So this is very useful and I rank this as A tier. Next we have stats. Um, this comes in the form of increased percentage of dexterity, intelligence or strength or just flat out 60 to 20 dexterity while you gain no inherent bonuses from dexterity. Well, uh, we are not a, a dex in or strength stacker so the percentage increase we get from the first passive variant will be very low and hence I'll rank it as C tier. Now for the second variant I think that uh, 120 dex is definitely very powerful even if you don't gain any inherent bonuses. Uh, 60 is definitely helpful but I don't really like the part where you don't gain any inherent bonuses. So overall this is B to S tier depending on the amount of dexterity that you gain from this node. Now moving on to charges. There's this uh, passive that gives you increased minimum endurance charges, increased minimum frenzy charges, and it reduces your maximum power charges. Now we are not concerned about the reduced maximum power charges because power charges do nothing for us. Now what do endurance charges do? They give us 4% to all alley resistances and 4% additional physical damage reduction. Now this is very powerful and because this endurance charge is up all the time, we can rely on this uh, 4 to 8% all alley rest as part as of our base elemental resistances and hence this is very powerful. And as for frenzy charges, it gives us increased attack speed, which means that our shield charge is faster. It gives us increased cast speed. We cast our curse and our cold snap and creeping force faster. And it also gives us a more damage multiplier. So this is really, really powerful. And I rank this as A to S tier, depending on whether you get one or two charges. Next, we have flat life. So there's a variant where you get 30 to 50 maximum life. Um, this is definitely really good, really powerful, and I rank this as S tier. Even getting 30 maximum life is uh, worthy of an S tier. And then we have a different variant where you get lesser life, 15 to 25, but you get to recover 1% life on Q. Now, I really like the 1% life on Q, and I think that it sufficiently uh, compensates the lower life rule, and I give this an S tier. Lastly, we have the same amount of maximum life, but instead of 1% life on Q, you get regenerate 0.4% life per second. So this node is slightly better for bossing, but overall, um, regenerate percentage life is lackluster compared to percentage life on Q. And so I rank this as A to S tier, depending on whether you get the 15 life or 25 maximum life rule. Next, we have an interesting node, which is you have higher chance to get poison, but you get 100% chance to avoid bleeding. Well, if you combine this with protection mastery, and if you select corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on you, you can effectively drop bleeding and corrupted blood on your flask and have permanent uh, bleed and corrupted blood avoidance. And you can roll your flask into something else, I mean your life flask, such as uh, poison, immunity, or hinder miam immunity and hence uh, this can provide quite a uh, good utility and hence I, I rank this building avoid an A tier. Next we have block. The modern code dot build does not stack chance to block or spell block chance and flat increase in chance to block is more effective when you have higher block chance. So this 3 to 5% block chance to block on the modern code dot build increases your EHP 
but it is not very effective, and hence I rank this a B tier. Same goes to 3-5% to chance to block spell damage, it is B tier. And we have something more interesting, you have 3% minus 3% chance to block, but you have something called deflection. And what is deflection? It gives you 5% chance to block attack, and when you're holding a shield, you have 25% chance to gain endurance charge when you block. So overall, this is a plus 2% chance to block attack, and you have a chance, have some chances to gain endurance charges. Now this note looks quite good on paper, but the reality is the modern codot build does not have high chance to block, so the block ch chance is not uh, very effective, and also the chance that you get the endurance charge will also be quite low, so looks good on paper, but in reality it's not that good, I would rank this an A tier. Now I'll talk about some baits. What are some notes that look very good on paper, but it's actually a mousetrap. It's actually not that good. First off, we have Cold Snap and creeping, creeping Frost Sap. Okay, so, it sounds really cool. We have a node specially for Cold Snap and Creeping Frost. This must be the node we want for Cold Dot, right? Wrong. This node is very ineffective for us. What is Sap? Okay, Sap reduces the enemy's damage by up to 20%, based on the amount of heat lightning damage that you deal. And as a core dot build, we deal minuscule amounts of heat lightning damage. And therefore, this is very the effectiveness of this is very low, and hence I rank this as D tier. Do not be baited by this. Next, we also have level 30 gems. So you may be trailing on the website and then you see, hey, there's Stuff like level 30 bone chill, level 30 control destruction, efficacy, swift affliction. This is so cool. If I have this on my weapon or on my shield, I can transfer core snap onto my weapon or shield and free up gem slots. Well, you're wrong because these level 30 gems do not appear on uh, one handed weapons or shields, and therefore uh, you will be looking for these uh, gems high and low and they will not exist. So quit looking for them. They are not relevant for Cold Dot unless you are interested in using a unique stuff. So uh, do not look out for this. Here's some final advice. The perfect tree is extremely expensive. Similar to most items in PoE, you do not expect to get 6 lines of useful stats and all tier 1 rule. So similarly, uh, do not try to get the perfect tree. It will be almost impossible or extremely expensive. The next would be uh, higher tier nodes require combining lower tier nodes. So if you can't find them, uh, it may be because you need to combine some lower tier nodes. And some nodes can only be created on combination. And the last thing is that uh, some nodes can only appear on the weapon or shield. So for example, Arcane Sanctuary can only appear on the shield. That's it from me. Have I missed out any useful passive nodes for Cold Dot? Please write in the comment below so that we can all learn and be at the cutting edge research of Codot. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.